So I spent about two decades with uh, the director of operations for the CIA. Uh, that time was all spent uh, overseas uh, running uh, a variety of different activities. Frankly, nothing stays the same. How you perform in life, how you succeed, um, how you fail, how you navigate all the aspects of life and what it throws at you is going to depend in large part uh, on your ability to understand and deal with this truth that nothing stays the same. Now, what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about a couple of lessons that I learned while I was with the CIA in operations and that I was able to take out into the, the world with me when I did leave uh, and, and went into the commercial world. Frankly, they're just as applicable to any aspect of life. So if I talk about how they apply to business, you can just take the word business out, put in the word life, and we're good to go. I was recruited into the CIA's operations directorate as a young man, and believe me, the world looked a lot different back then. Frankly, our biggest threat, our biggest enemy at the time was still the Soviet Union. Um, terrorism, which we've all unfortunately become too familiar with over the years, uh, was a concern, but it wasn't a top priority. Uh, that, of course, would change. And there is that word again, change. Um, we've all become uh, way too familiar with that word uh, over the past 12 months. And I don't know of a better example of nothing stays the same, of, of change, of the need to anticipate change than uh, COVID-19. And I'm going to tell you a little story right now, and it's not designed to um, impress or uh, toot my own horn. But in 2018, I was doing an interview uh, with a, a fellow named Joe Rogan. Uh, he's a great, great guy, terrific, uh, and curious about everything. So we were sitting there uh, during one of his podcasts talking about crises, and specifically when the next crisis would occur and what it would look like, how it would manifest itself. So this was 2018, and my response to him was that the next crisis that we would face would be a pandemic. Now, right? Okay, we'll take a moment to appreciate just how insightful I am. But it had nothing to do with rocket science or my ability to to you know be uh, you know predictive. It had everything to do with the fact that you know I had a, a habit of assessing, anticipating threats, risks, and change along with people that I work with, colleagues that I, I, I you know, are, are much smarter than I am. And so you're constantly assessing the operating environment and, and making, frankly, oftentimes educated guesses um, about what could happen next. It's not rocket science. There's no secret sauce to it. It's assessing and evaluating and trying always to understand the world that you live in, what surrounds you, what could potentially change and how. And then, importantly, how to react to it. Now, let's return to our original story. There I am, a young man, uh, joined the CIA. And uh, because uh, this is a TEDx talk and we don't have a lot of time, we're fast forwarding now, almost 20 years. And it, they were very challenging and very fulfilling and very entertaining years. I work uh, with people, uh, some of the finest that I, I will ever meet in my life. Uh, but at a certain point, I decided it was time to move on. Um, it was a definitely a young man's game, and I was uh, aging, as do we all. Uh, now, I advised my senior CIA management uh, that I was leaving, and I told them I was leaving to start up a business. Now, um, I had had an idea that if I left, joined together with a couple of friends, that we might be able to form up a, a private sector firm of some sort that would focus on providing intelligence and security services uh, to support companies and financial firms and, and others. Well, the announcement that I was leaving to go into business was met with, uh, and the word I'm searching for here is skepticism. Uh, people in the agency, people who genuinely cared for my well-being and my future, uh, pointed out to me repeatedly that I had absolutely no business experience. Uh, and I was told on more than one occasion <clears throat> that I had developed a certain specific set of skills that would not transfer well to the outside world. Well, being stubborn, being obstinate, um, I did not take their advice, and I decided I would take the chance, and I left the outfit. And after writing the world's saddest business plan, I started a consulting firm. 
Now, within that first year of being outside of the confines of what I was comfortable with in the agency and being in private business, I realized something. And I realized that my colleagues within the agency had been both right and wrong. <clears throat> they were right about my business experience because <laughs> I had none. And that manifested itself in mistakes and missteps on a uh, embarrassingly regular uh, basis. But they were wrong about one key certain thing. And that was that some of those certain skills, some of those certain truths that I had learned from the CIA were completely relevant, completely transferable uh, to my new life operating in the commercial world. Now, one of the first lessons you learn as a new operations officer in the CIA is that intelligence does not have a long shelf life. If you don't get that intelligence into the hands of analysts and decision makers, uh, it's, it's essentially useless because the pace of events, the pace of change means that actionable intelligence has a very short shelf life. In the world of espionage and intelligence, everything changes. Nothing stays the same. I know I sound like I'm repeating myself, and I am. As an operations officer, you're constantly looking at your environment. You're assessing possible changes. It just becomes ingrained. It's one of the things that they, 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 they teach you over and over again. The host government may be changing their attitude or policies towards the U.S. The host country military um, where you're operating may decide to mount a coup against the existing government. That's a good thing to know ahead of time. So there are an unlimited number of ways in which your operations could be affected or negatively impacted. The only way to minimize potential risks is to stay alert, to stay aggressive, and to be proactive. What I learned during my first year of building a business in the commercial world is that the same is true for your operating environment and business, and frankly, again, in life in general. Existing threats, the nature of risk, the, the competition, your internal capabilities, every other aspect of life needs to be constantly monitored because, you're right, nothing stays the same. This fact basically requires that successful companies and successful people, no matter your age, constantly update their intelligence, monitor their environment, and adjust accordingly. There it is again. Assess your operating environment. Understand what's happening around you. Get out of your bubble. And in today's world, it's very easy to be in our individual bubbles. It was easy before the pandemic because we've got social media and you know what it's like. You go out to a restaurant. We used to go to restaurants and you would sit and everybody, they wouldn't be talking to each other. They'd be looking at their phones, right? Now during the pandemic, it's even worse. It's so hard to get out of your bubble. But when life returns to normal, and it will, then what you have to do is remember, try, try to be more aware of your surroundings and your environment, what's happening to others around you, what's happening you know, to, to yourself, and how do you react? Those that fail to be proactive will fail to be competitive. Okay? Some of the key takeaways, whatever you want to refer to it, um, is when you're talking about the impact of change. Uh, and the need to understand change in your lives is <clears throat> never rest on your laurels. And by that, what I mean is don't be complacent with your own cleverness or your own successes. And that's hard to do, but you have to, you have to guard against that. Okay. Don't become complacent, right? You did a great job. Great. Tomorrow's another day. You got to do another great job. Information is perishable. It's like what I was talking about before. Get that piece of Intel. If you don't get it into the chain of command, it becomes useless. What you know today may not have as much value or relevance even uh, tomorrow. So you should be constantly learning. You should be constantly evaluating and understanding the world that you live in. Competition adjusts. Uh, operating conditions change. Opportunities appear and they disappear. Risk changes and new threats uh, evolve. And don't fall in love with your ideas. Okay? I know you're all busy scribbling these key points down. You're going to look at them day after day as you go through life. But don't fall in love with the ideas. Okay? That's very important to understand. Be proactive. Don't wait for warning signs. Uh, don't wait for indications of trouble. Be smarter than that. 
right? Identify them before the others do. Develop vision. There's a difference between vision and a thousand yard stare. Keep looking down the road. If, if you put it in sports terms, if you think about in basketball, the very best point guards, whether you're talking high school, college, or the professional leagues, they have court vision. They keep their eyes up, right? They know where our, all the parts of the, of the puzzle are on the court, and they can anticipate what may happen next and develop very quickly a plan, what to do, okay? So ensure that this, this kind of demands that you then have, a, have some sort of process that you develop, and there's no right or wrong. You develop your own system for how to uh, routinely evaluate your operating environment and, and the conditions around you and, and, and what that requires you to do. So I think the other key truth that I'd like to talk about that I took away from the CIA and has always served me well, both in business and in life in general, is a concept that I call uh, get off the X. OK, the X being uh, an ambush site. <clears throat> and from the agency, uh, I learned that, you know, one key to life is to avoid being ambushed. Okay, that's literally and metaphorically, literally especially. But what this means is that the agency teaches you not only that nothing stays the same, but it teaches you that you've got to oftentimes make decisions with imperfect information. Because, and, and this is critical, because in a world where nothing stays the same, where change is constant, you're asked to make decisions all the time. Right. It just happens. You're asked to make decisions. Uh, you're, you're and sometimes you don't even know you're doing it. They're very small. They could be almost not noticeable in, in your day to day life. But you're still making decisions. Others are very complex. And, you know, you've got a decision coming down the pike and you know that the consequences could be large. So. Getting back to this idea of the X. What you want to do as part of your effort to understand your operating environment to be able to make decisions um, is you need to be able to understand how to um, how to recognize danger signs. I guess that's the best way to put it. If you fail to recognize the danger signs uh, coming up uh, on the road ahead in life, then at least it's important to know how to react when you do land on the X unexpectedly. OK, we spent uh, an, an a tremendous amount of time in CIA operational training, understanding the warning signs, understanding danger signs ahead of an ambush. When a hostile element chooses an ambush site, they're going through a certain process, as an example, not to get too in the weeds of ambushes. You go home, people say, what'd you learn about? Yeah, I learned about setting up an ambush site. That's not what I'm teaching here. What I'm saying is that there's a certain process. And so therefore, if you're trying to avoid that, you understand what they're doing, that helps you develop an ability to avoid it, okay? And so, therefore, the concept is you need to be able to identify the signs of, or indications of danger and avoid trouble or at least quickly react by moving out of the danger zone. In the bigger picture sense, now transferring this just from CIA operations to life and business world, it means the ability to make decisions in a timely manner, okay? That's really what we're talking about. A major misconception of the CIA is that, uh, and it's usually because, frankly, you know, films, beach books uh, about the CIA, but the misconception is that in the agency, you always have all the information uh, or intelligence that you need in order to make sound decisions. Well, in reality, no. In reality, that doesn't happen. You rarely have all the information that you need, and many times, you are making decisions based on imperfect intelligence, sometimes sketchy intelligence, uh, <clears throat> sometimes questionable intelligence. But you have to learn to deal with it. You have to learn how to move forward in that, in that arena. One of the key elements of training in the agency is teaching officers how to act decisively with imperfect information. Right? If you wait until you have all the reporting that you want, in CIA terms, if you wait for all that information to come in from human sources and from technical collection and from our liaison partners, you know what? A, you're never going to get to that point where you feel like you've got all that information. And B, 
really, events are going to pass you by. A crisis may develop. And in that world, bad things can happen. People can get hurt or killed. And the balancing act in, in the agency is how to teach officers how to evaluate their information requirements, how, how, to, how to understand you know, resource allocation. And so that what they get is sort of within the most optimum time frame, they get the information that they understand they're going to get within that time frame. And then they realize now it is time to act uh, while the information, the intelligence, the operational ability is still there. A critical aspect of this is the ability for personnel within the organization to make decisions. Now, when I say organization, I mean the agency. I could mean a business. I could mean a student club. I could mean a, a, a neighborhood association. doesn't matter. It's all the same. You're still making decisions. Okay? The CIA has a very established chain of command, just the way it is. But within that structure, operations officers are given tremendous responsibility okay, to make decisions. They are empowered to make decisions. That's very important. And the same is necessary within a business or even within a you know, home environment. Right? I've got three little boys, right? Scooter, Sluggo, and Muggsy. And to the degree that we can, we give them the ability to make decisions for themselves. And those decisions, the responsibility increases as they age, right? I mean, we're, we're, not, we're not stupid about it. But, uh, but to the degree that we can, we give those three knuckleheads the ability to take on some decision-making ability and that empowers them. It gives them independence. It makes them think more. Okay? That's important. The delegation of authority and clear chain of command with increasing responsibility is essential to maximize the talent. And again, that talent is whether it's within government, within business, within your community, within your school. It's all, it's, it, it, it all applies. Inherent in this concept is the need to empower uh, people, employees, personnel, family members to make decisions within their relevant realms of responsibility, um, right? So I guess if you look and say, what are some of the takeaways from this idea of getting off the X, right? Um, well, you encourage a culture within whatever organization, whatever environment you are in, where decision-making is valued, okay? That's, that's, that's a, I can't stress that enough. You learn to make decisions with, uh, without perfect information. Okay? Again, if you wait for all the information to come in so that you feel perfectly comfortable, opportunities pass you by. Bad things can happen. Okay? So learn. Learn how to evaluate and understand. I've got enough information. Now I can act. Learn to identify when to act and when to hold fire. Right? That's still important. Have a clear chain of command. Understand what the reporting lines are. And sometimes, you know what, you've just got to act. That's just the way it works. Sometimes you have to act. Failure to make a decision oftentimes just simply results in failure. Finally, the last thing, have a plan B. Okay, As the great heavyweight fighter Mike Tyson famously said, everybody's got a plan until you get punched in the face. And you know what? <laughs> I can speak for that. He's absolutely right. Uh, and we, we spent more time in operations at the agency working on scenarios, alternative plans, alternative arrangements, because we knew, right, we knew that plans often unravel as soon as they begin, no matter how meticulous and how well thought out, have a backup. And then you know what you do with that? You have another backup. And it goes back to the beginning when I said I wrote the world's saddest business plan when I left the agency, went into private business. You know what? I realized within days after I'd started a business that my business plan was terrible. I shredded it, right? And so I wrote another one. That was my plan B. That one was also terrible. So I got rid of that one. I think the fifth one actually worked pretty darn well. But my point is, you understand and you anticipate potential missteps and mistakes, and you have a backup plan.